did have a, 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 a Sunday where we had to cancel because of ice. But uh, we still want to be consistent in teaching this message. I sometimes wish I could do one message, then do another, and then do another. However, uh, some messages need to be continued. And the reason why is because you can't get everything out of one setting. Uh, and so I'm praying that you all would get this and understand that what you heard the previous weeks, you have to have a consistency. It's got to be uh, a consistency of hearing, of hearing, of hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So we're talking about struggles. I'm giving you a definition of struggles already. You already know what struggles are. And uh, there is a translation uh, in the, in the uh, King James where it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. There's another translation that says we struggle not against flesh and blood, against human, uh, human beings. Our struggle is many times they are uh, things that happen to everyday people. Uh, it's not unusual for people to struggle. Whether you are saved or unsaved, you're not exempt from struggle. Don't let anybody think that because you come to church and you're saved and you love God, that you are exempt from struggle. Struggles are part of our life. And struggles can produce some godly fruit if we will allow struggles to have its perfect way, or have let God have his perfect way through our struggles. We have to choose our attitudes. We cannot choose our struggles. Everyone may have different struggles, but we all struggle. Your struggle may be a little different than mine. I can't judge you for your struggles because I got my own struggles I have to deal with. When we try to judge someone else in their struggles, as a matter of fact, when a person is going through a, a certain struggle in their season, and we like to look at them in that season and put a label on them, but we can't, we do not label them because uh, that's not their permanent situation. That's not their, that may, that may be their wilderness, but that doesn't mean that they have entered their promise land. Folks, you don't judge a person in the wilderness. Many of us, we see us as we're going through. And that's what it's all about, going through. God never told the people of Israel to build a, 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 a temple in the wilderness. He said build a tabernacle. Erect the tabernacle. The tabernacle is a tent. A tent is something temporary. So do not make permanent decisions based on temporary conditions. Do not sit there and think that somehow whatever your struggle are today is going to be that way next week. It doesn't mean it. It don't mean it's going to be that way next month, next year. Amen? Amen. So, uh, but you do pick your attitude. And if you have the right attitude, you can go through your struggles realizing that it's not going to be always. Everyone has to struggle with something. Uh, no one gets to pick their journey. God picks their journey for them. Amen? Amen. Okay. The Bible says the steps of a righteous man didn't say that they ordered their own steps. The steps of the righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Okay? Now, here's the thing about struggles. Sometimes on our journey, there are struggles and there are uh, obstacles. There are challenges on that journey that we have, the path that we have. But sometimes we create our own struggles. Amen? Amen. And Folks, I want you to get this. Many of our struggles are created or they come because of our self-images. They have a lot to do with our self-images. How do you see yourself? How do you see you? Do you see yourself based on your circumstances, your condition? Or do you see yourself the way God say you are, who God say you are? If you don't get an agreement with God, you're going to see yourself the way that the world say that you are. You're going to look at yourself through the images or the, or the, or the, the, the thoughts and the, the, the influence of the world. You don't want to do that. Because the world wants us to believe that we are defeated. The world wants us to think that we are helpless. The world wants us to think that we have no options, but we have options. And so you have to see yourself through the eyes of God, through the Word of God. You have to identify with what God say you are, who God say you are. You cannot uh, wait for the uh, manifestation of it. If God says it, you have to come into agreement with it. And when you come into agreement with God, then you are you start becoming what He said that you already are. When God spoke to Abraham and said, "I have made thee a father of many nations," Abraham was not a father of many nations. But when God spoke it, the process had already begun. And before it can happen, Abraham had to get an agreement with God. And the Bible said that. 
Abraham did not consider his own body to now dead, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And what God was able, what God promised, he was able to perform it. Do you believe God is able to perform what he promised? Amen. 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 So if God says something about you, then you can't let the devil tell you what your image should be. God already told you what your image should be. So image of self, if we don't understand that we are struggling with something that we have uh, uh, assumed that we can never do anything because when we were young, somebody said you'll never amount to anything. You'll be a failure just like your mom, just like the dad. You'll be a failure. You'll never be anything because of your heredity or your DNA. You gotta read DNA. You gotta read. You, you don't have the same DNA that you had from your mom and dad. Amen. Amen. If you've been born again, you have been read DNA. Amen. 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 You have been born again. You've been redeemed. Okay? Which now means that you now have a new father. And he's your heavenly father. And his name is Elohim. Which means God with us. He is Jehovah Jireh. It means God I provide. He is Jehovah Nisi. He is Jehovah our God. He is God. God is everything. Jehovah Rapha. See, he's our healer. Everything we need, God is there. Amen? Amen? So, while you're going through your struggles, God is not forsaking you. Matter of fact, the reason why you are going through and not being overcome by it is because God is right there with you. Amen. He said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you, but I'll be with you how long? Always. Always, to the end of the age, right? So the end of the age is still going on, so that means he hasn't he have gone anywhere. Amen. Now, you may, not be able to tr you may not be able to trace him, but you can sure trust him. That's why the Bible says, trust in the Lord with some of your heart. Oh, oh what is it? Oh. All of your heart. I just wanted you to wait. Amen. So, make sure that your struggles do not come from slow or low self-image. Because you happen to see things based on, not as things are always, but as you are. You see things the way you are. You sometimes, you make decisions not based upon the situation, but based on how you are, how you see yourself. I'm not able to do that. Who said You have made the determination with your words, you are speaking, I'm not able to do that. And that's the image you have of yourself. And someone come and tell you, well, that ain't the way God sees you, but you have a hard time because you've been beaten down with this old... I call it distorted self-image that the enemy has put, in, has put there for each and every one of us. And if you're in agreement with the enemy, and if you say, well, no, I can never amount to anything, then you're going to have whatever you say. Amen. We cannot, cannot establish a godly mindset on distorted mental image. I want you all to get that. We're trying to, we, we, we get saved and we try to build on that same old distorted mental image. You know, you got to get rid of that mental image. Mm -hmm. You can't keep having that same old defeated mental image and think that somehow you're going to build on that. Being a, a born again believer is not an addition to your information. It is a transformation of your information. It is to get rid of that old stuff, delete that old stuff, and begin to start seeing yourself through the eyes and the word of God, through godly kingdom principles. You have to get to in your mind that God is true, and let every man be a liar. Whatever God says about you, that's, that's the way it is. The way God sees you, that's who you are. God's not looking at your exterior. God looks at the heart. God said, man looks at the outer appearance. He said, but I look at the heart. God knows what's in the heart because he knows what he put in it. We are individually, fearfully, and wonderfully made. And marvelous are his works and let my soul know right well. God knew what he was doing when he created you. He did not make you to be like everybody else. That's why your fingerprints are different. Your DNA is different. That's why everything about you is different than everybody else. If he wanted another Joel Osteen, then one of you all become unnecessary. Don't act like another, don't be like another person. Be who God created you to be. You were born in the rich and do not die at top. Amen. Quit letting the enemy distort the image of who God created. 
You are a brand new preacher in Christ Jesus. If any man be in Christ, he's a new preacher. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new, and all things are of God. Amen. I don't care how you feel. You don't, your feeling has nothing to do with what God said you are. As I just don't feel saved today. Who cares how you feel? It has nothing to do with God's word. It doesn't change God's word. It doesn't invalidate God's word. Whatever God says, no matter of fact, God's word should invalidate your feelings. Amen. 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 And I don't care what the enemy says about you. I don't care how many times you fail. You got to quit calling yourself a failure. You're not a loser. Maybe before you came to Christ, you may have been, but you're not now. Amen. 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 See, you got to understand the scripture when the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. So if you thought of yourself as being a loser before you came to Christ, you're a new creature in Christ. Jesus. All things are passed away. Now you are a winner. <coughs> matter of fact, you're more than a winner. You are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Amen. you got to speak what God says about you. I don't care how you feel. I don't care what happened to you on the way to church. I don't care what happened to you this weekend. I don't care what you got to go back home to. If God said you are a winner, that you are more than a conqueror, that you are an overcomer, you better get, get in agreement with God. Amen. You better start getting that image of who God said you are. Because I'm going to tell you, when you get in agreement with the devil, the devil is going to sit there and make a, a, a mockery of your life. Do you know that when God said you are you know when, when God said you are something, do you know that the enemy don't know you from anything else? He's not that intelligent. Don't think that Satan is that intelligent. He's not. We give him too many props. See, if he knew who Jesus was, he wouldn't have had him crucified. And if he knew all of us was going to come out of that crucifixion, he never would have let Jesus. He, see, the problem is, is that he doesn't know. He didn't know that we were going to be around because he didn't know that Jesus' death brought life to us. <laughs> so he tried to distort our minds like he's so brilliant. He's not. The reason why he wanted you to believe he's so brilliant is he's so omnipotent and I'm... Look, there's only one omnipotent, omniscient, and I'm like friends with one, and that's God Almighty. Amen. 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 So that's why in 2 Corinthians, going back to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5, it says, For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So we talked to this a little bit about this last time, and I'm going to just kind of give you a little bit of uh, of last week's message so that we can continue where we left off. Now, you have to understand, he said, the weapons of our warfare, which means we want warfare, they're not chronic, but they are mighty through God that are pulling down of strongholds. So keep in mind, the stronghold that you are pulling down was not put there by God, or God would be working against himself if he put strongholds there and you pulling them down. So that means strongholds was put there by somebody and it wasn't God. And then he says, you got to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring it to captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. So a stronghold, as we talked before, is a place built to withstand assaults and attacks in uh, any place of exceptional security. It is a place of control, possession, and domination. This is what the enemy wants to do. He wants to dominate us. He wants to control. He wants to uh, possess us. Every person on this planet, if he can possess us and control our will, guess what he's going to do? He's going to have us doing all kind of crazy stuff. Don't think that a lot of these people that's committing these crimes in these schools are not demon possessed. We say mentally ill because we don't know how to. We, there are a lot of things that's happening because of demonic powers. There are a lot of people who got the mental challenges and ain't shooting up no schools. They're not even harmful to themselves. But when you are doing something where you are harming someone else and harming yourself, you know, like they said, you know, we're going to start doing a background check, which they should, uh, to make sure that they're uh, not selling them weapons to someone who's got a mental challenge. I said, they better be glad I don't have control over that because I think any time that you can hate a person because of their skin color, because of their religion, because of their gender, then I think you got some mental issues. 
I mean, because if you say, well, this person is mentally disturbed, well, if you don't like me because of my skin color, then I think you got a mental issue. Mm. Because I don't worship the way you worship, now you feel like you have a right to kill me. So you got some mental issue. That's that's the that's a mental issue. Amen. Matter of fact, I think anybody that don't like me is crazy anyway. <laughs> okay, so stronghold. Now, imagination. The imagination is the creative ability, folks. Listen, it's the creative ability to face and resolve difficulties. So God gives you imagination. Okay? But the imagination also means, look, the faculty of imagining or forming mental images or concepts of what is not actually present to the senses. That's what it does to give you a mental image. Imagination, you are imagining things, you are imagining pictures, you are seeing in pictures, not in words. So you are forming mental images in your mind. The enemy wants to distort those mental images. They don't want you to have a godly self-image. They want you to have a, a, a distorted <coughs> image, a perverted image of who God created you to be. That's why you hardly ever hear people say, we have been given dominion. It's hard sometimes to tell a person, listen, you are uh, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. That's Ephesians. You have been created so close to God that you are higher than the angels. Whoa, higher than the angels? Yes. You are created higher than the angels. The angels are created to serve. We are created as family. The angels are created to serve and become the, uh, the, the servants of the earth of salvation. They are ministering servants, ministering spirits. To serve the believers. I got one amen. amen. We have to realize, folks, that God created us as family. Amen. Name one angel that died for Lucifer and all the third of the heavenly host that fell with him. Nobody died for them. When they, when, when, when they fell, they was permanently doomed. But guess what? When we missed the mark, God sent his only begotten son into amen. the earth. Amen. That's how much he loved us. The Bible even says that for God so loved. Well, how much God so much? For God so loved you. Do this for me. Touch yourself right here. Just right here and say, God loved me so much that he sent his son, his only son, to die for me. See, you have to take that. You got to take the virtual. Amen. I don't care how you feel. I don't care what you did last night, last week. It doesn't matter. Jesus still is the only name under heaven in which men must be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. And Jesus willingly came to die for us. To die for us. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. So, it's not being, it's not folks being uh, uh, arrogant when you say, oh shoot, man, I, I must be worth something. For God to for God for God to send his son to die for me, I must be worth something. Amen. You know what redeemed me, right? To do what? To purchase back, right? That's what it means. So here God said, you know what? I love them so much. I know they're gonna die in their sins. And they're going to be eternally doomed. And I know that the wages of sin is death. Oh, man, i got I got to get them back. They are so precious to me. I love them so much. So since the wages of death, then somebody got to die. And Jesus says, Father, prepare a body for me and send me. And Jesus stepped out of eternity into time. And he came and he became the sacrifice for each and every one of us. <clears throat> and he tasted death for each and every one of us. So the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Amen. So he gave us, he, he took upon our punishment and gave us eternal life. 
Don't you ever think that you're not worthy? Because you're disagreeing with God. If God say, I'm going to send my only son to die for your sins, and you say, well, I ain't worth it. I'm such an unworthy. Listen, I'm worth it. If he said I'm worth it, then I'm worth it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So a mental image, and this is what I told you last time, a mental image is this. It's assembled in the mind from information received, and this is the part, whether true or false. That's a mental image. A false mental image of who you are is, is, is perverted and distorted by the enemy. He doesn't want you to know who you really are. That's why the Bible calls him a deceiver. When people fail to study this word, they fail to read this word, they fail to, to apply this word, then the enemy then can tell you anything because you don't know. I'm going to say this. Listen, this is, this is just me talking. When I continue to hear about our present administration, and I say, it's amazing how he doesn't know the Constitution. And they asked the one senator a question, said, is it necessary for the president to be able to know what's in the Constitution? And he said, well, that ain't how he got elected. He got elected because of the people. Yeah, but is it, is it a requirement for him to know the Constitution? And they said, no, it's based upon being elected. So here's the thing. So you put your hand on the Bible, you raise your right hand, and say that you're going to uphold the Constitution. You don't even know what's in the Constitution. And so don't laugh, don't laugh, because there are people in the body of Christ who say, I am a Christian, and they don't even know what is in the Bible. How can you represent someone and don't even know who you're representing? I don't get it. I don't understand. We don't read the Bible, but we say, I'm a Christian. How do you know you are? Well, somebody told me. Well, you're an ambassador. An ambassador is a representative. Do you represent Jesus? Oh, yeah. How do you know? How do you know? Why do you think discipleship is... A lot of people don't like discipleship because discipleship means that it costs you everything. Why people love salvation? Because salvation is free. Discipleship costs you everything. So you have to you have to give up something to become a disciple. You have to give up time. You have to read the word. You have to study the word. You have to obey the word to be a representative of Jesus. But just to be, I'm just saved. I'm just glad I'm saved. How do you know you're saved? Well, because the Bible says, where is it found? Um, well, my pastor told me. How do you know your pastor said? Whether false or true, we have different mental images. That's why sometimes we, we are so fluctuating when it comes to the things of God. We don't know because we feel like we have to feel like we have to feel a certain way. I gotta feel saved. I just don't feel saved today. So that means you're saved when you feel like it? Or are you saved because of what God has done through Christ? See, so if you're saved and you say you're a child of God, then why are you acting like... <laughs> so your mental image is important. It's very important. The way you see yourself, you have to see yourself the way God says you are. It has nothing to do with how you feel. It has nothing to do with your outer appearance. It has nothing to do with what you're going through right now. You may be struggling right now. Just, just give me a wave. How many of y'all are struggling right now? Can I tell you something? Whatever you're struggling with, God is right there with you. He is. He's right there. He's right there. Matter of fact, God was there before the struggles got there. Amen. Amen. And many of us can't handle the struggles because... We don't, we don't, we shouldn't wait until we get in the struggle to prepare for it. We struggle, you prepare for struggles in the peace time. <laughs> then you have peace in your struggles. A lot of people don't have peace in their struggles because they wait until everything happened and all of a sudden, oh, now it didn't work. I, I'm, I'm telling you one thing. You remember that time we was down, we was working, we were working, we worked together, and all of a sudden the power went out. Remember that? And uh, we, we both headed outside. We, we was, we was, ready to, we was all heavy out the door. 
And then we heard somebody scream, so we ran back in. And so anyway, uh, we both kind of like helped out where we could. And I had this guy who was who had gotten knocked off of this scalpel. And he was, I'm walking around so he won't go in the shop. And all of a sudden, the guy came out and said, pray for him, pray for him, pray for him. I said, man, go on back in the building. I got this. It ain't, you know, it ain't time to pray now. It's time to act. You, you pray before the situation happens. Amen. 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 You said, well, what about praying and doing it? Now I'm trying to talk to him. I'm trying to keep him talking. I'm trying to, I'm, 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 it's, it's time now to do If you pray before a situation, many times you can have peace in the situation. Amen. If you if you pray before your struggles, then your struggles won't be as big as some people see it. Man, I can't believe you still got peace of mind going through all of that. What the what? All that you going through? Oh, um, yeah, I, I, I'm okay. I'm good. I can't believe you. You yeah, because I already prepared for this. Prepare for your struggles. Having a mental image that I already see I'm coming out of this. And I'm going to come out okay. Matter of fact, I'm going to come out stronger. What I go through, when I come, when I go through it, when I get through it, I'm going to come out stronger on the other side. That's how you do it. That's the way I see it. I'm not asking you to get an agreement with me. Because if me and God is in agreement, we more than a majority. Amen. So when God brings you through something, He brings you through it. He don't bring you to it. He just brings you, bring you through it. Amen. But guess what? When He's having you going through it, you got you to go through it. Hallelujah. And, we, and you, know what makes, you know what makes this a, good, a great life? Because when you already know, it's like watching a rerun. You know, if you're watching a rerun and you already know you're going to win, then you don't mind going through a fight. If I know I'm going to win a fight, I don't care if I get knocked down in round four, round five, round eight. I find out that in round ten I'm going to win, so hey, you can keep up. I don't care. I know by the tenth round, I'll win. So uh, you know what I did? I looked at the end of the book. <laughs> And the image I got is that I'm going to be seated at the, at the table. I'm going to be feasting with the Lamb of God. Amen. Amen. And Satan is going to be bound. Amen. For eternity. I peeped, I saw my name written in the Lamb's book all the time. I got a glimpse. I said, oh, there my name is. So I already went. So if I already know I win, why am I concerned about my present struggles? Amen. When I already know I win. How many of y'all believe you win already? Amen. Then tell yourself like that. What are you afraid of? Amen? Amen. So you have to have a mental image of uh, seeing yourself the way God sees you. Many images or composites of sight, sound, taste, touch, smell, opinions, and moods and attitudes combined with associative memories. Listen, both Conscious and subconsciously. Now I'm not going to get into that this this, this week because I talked enough about that last week. So I want to get into something else. Now, if you look at 2 Corinthians again, chapter 5, he said, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and this is the part I want to get into, and bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. And bring it into captivity every Thought, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Question, what or who determines what you think? Do your circumstances determine what you think? Do you look at the news and determine what you think? Do you get your opinion from watching the news? Do you get your image from watching the news? I listen to different news channels and I say it's amazing how people spin certain things. You can look at one story, like for example, uh, I asked a question on Facebook because 
I saw where our president talked about women as teachers. Women to teachers. It's Black History Month, right? Were they talking about women black teachers too? If it's a predominantly white school, were they talking about women black teachers? Can you imagine a woman black teachers in a predominantly white school? Mm. My question I put on Facebook, if someone was to skyjack a plane, would they talk about women, the flight attendants? <coughs> it wouldn't want flight attendants, why would you want teachers? I was reading where they had some armed security people that wouldn't go into school. What made you think of teacher? <laughs> <laughs> Teachers got a nut on their plate. <laughs> and they talk about giving them a bonus. Now imagine if something happened where they accidentally, look at the different scenarios. What if they see the student as not a real threat, but they just can't take it no more? Boom, oh, blow the student away. How, how can a teacher shoot a former student anyway if they say no? You know, all of this stuff is, it's all sound theoretical stuff. But let me tell you. You have to, to me, if you want to solve that issue, then you get some proper security. Train him. Yes. Amen. 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 And let them watch the schools. But we have, we do live in a society where, yeah, you have to, you have to, you have to uh, have that kind of mentality now. It is sad, but that's the way it is. It's sad. So many people in the NRA pocket. It's sad. That's the way it is. So who determines what you think? What determines what you think? Listen, the thoughts that you are feeding into your mind is important because your thoughts create your belief and experiences. I said this to you before. You don't always see things the way they are. You see things the way you are. Y'all with me? Yeah. How many of y'all have a problem with this statement? Because I'm going to tell you, there are things that you look at and you say, man, I could never do that because you're looking at the way you are, not the way the situation is. Now, I'm going to use the same analogy I used before, and I think it's very appropriate because I use personal experiences. And I do remember where when I was, uh, was down on the lower level at a Project Kingdom Complex down there, and somebody asked me, I think Danielle asked me about something I needed to sign in my office. And so uh, it was a time when I, at the time, I was not in shape. At the time, I was out of condition, and it was hot. And on top of that, I just eat. We had a picnic down there. And she said, Pastor, did you ever sign that paperwork or whatever it was? And I said, it's up in the office. And I looked up at the building from down where I was, and I saw the hill. And that building like it was five miles away. And the hill like it was a mountain. But it really wasn't. But it looked so difficult because I was out of condition. It was a time where I would just go up there, just jog on up the hill, sign the paper, take it on. But I'm looking at that hill, and I'm saying, nah. So I went and got in my car. And as I was driving up to, I drove up here. <laughs> <laughs> and as I was driving, I was thinking, man, it was a time when I was just jogging right on up the hill. But now the hill intimidated me. The hill intimidated me. The hill didn't get bigger, folks. The building to get farther away, I saw that hill not based upon the hill being a challenge, it was based on my condition. The same way many of us see situations based on our condition, not based upon the problem. Because somebody else may see a problem different than you, and you can't understand it, it has to do with your mindset, the way you see it. It may not be as bad as what you think. And someone outside of the problem is trying to tell you, listen, it ain't that bad. Yes, it is. Okay, it ain't that bad. Don't make a permanent decision. It's not that bad. Yes, it is. Okay, calm down. Have you ever noticed that when you call 911, they tell you to calm down? <laughs> you know why? Because sometimes you are describing something, and some of you all know I'm talking to you because you can text up and you can exaggerate it so big. <laughs> <laughs> And it's not really as big as, y'all know some people that do that? I know they're not here with you today, but you know some people that can take something and exaggerate it? I had a house we had in Berkeley, and we was, we was we, uh, I had a tenant in there. 
And I had company, and she called and she said, Oh, Mr. Graves, she was Southern, Southern, excellent. Oh, Mr. Graves, you gotta get over here. Uh, walk and leave it, and the house is flooding, flooding, flooding. <laughs> now, I jump in my car because I said, I gotta go, I gotta go. Now, while I'm driving, I'm going down 270. Folks, I was speeding, and then all of a sudden it dawned on me. I say, I'm going to get a ticket. And I'm still going to be, I'm not going to make it. They're going to hold me up and go get a ticket. I said, let me slow down. But in my mind, my image of what she said, words have power. Amen. I actually saw my house flooding. I am telling you. Y'all, you know like the cartoon where you open the window and water comes gushing out? I actually got to the door, and when I opened, when I rung the doorbell, and I actually, when she came to the door, I'm looking down. I'm thinking, I'm going to have to get out of the way. That's that I'm serious. Because the way she said it, it was really exact. So I'm, so I'm walking in the house. I'm thinking, the carpet going to be real damp. The carpet just is bone dry. I said, where's the water? So I get to the bathroom. Oh, it, it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't ready now. So I'm looking, and there's a little water on the floor. So I'm thinking, it got to be a lot of water in the basement. Because the house is flooding, flooding, flooding. <laughs> it's got to be up. So I go down in the basement, and I'm looking, and the floor joists are burly wet. And you know what? Now, here's what I learned from that. That her experience and her exaggeration had me so, my heart was popping. And she was exaggerating, but when she saw it, she saw it different than what it really was. Sometimes people describe stuff, and they describe it based on their emotion. Ooh, blood is everywhere. They got ooh, he's bleeding so bad. Got a little paper cut. <laughs> Some people exaggerate. They make mountains out of molehills. Some people they they can't even they they have to juicy a story up and see because that's part of who they are. They're very dramatic. You know anybody dramatic? Yes. They call them drama queens? <laughs> they got drama kings too? Yes. You know drama kings in the churches. <laughs> but you know, people do. So they exaggerate. So that's why you need to have a con. You have to understand that people see things based on what's going on in their minds. What's going on in their This is the way they see it. And the way they see it is the way they really see it. And that's what they describe it. So that's why it's very important that you understand your thoughts. How do you feed your mind? How do you, what do you, how do you allow your mind to take in thoughts? Because folks, you got to get this. Your thoughts create your perception. I underline the word your. Because I want you to understand this. Your thoughts create your perception. That's not everybody's perception. They're yours. So when you tell me, well, that's the way it is. No, that's the way you think. That's your thoughts, and that's your perception. And you all know this one. Your perception is your reality. It creates your reality. So when a person says, well, that's not really the way it is. Yes, it is. No, it's not the way it is. And you can have five or six other people say, well, no, brother, that's not the way that is. Yes, it is. <laughs> five people say it's not. But that's the way it is. That's the way I see it. We know it. <laughs> and some people actually create struggles, whether they're realistic or not. It's real to them. And that's why I say you've got to have a mind renewed. Folks, when Paul wrote in Romans, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that is so important. When you hear me talking about the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, when you hear me talking about images, mental images, I'm not telling you something just to get another message across. I'm saying this is, this is the way it really is. My perception is my perception. It's my reality. So I have a different reality based on my perception. Now there is a God reality that's real no matter what. But sometimes we can take something and we can make it into something that's really, and someone said that's really not the way to, anybody ever say it to you, uh, you tell them, say, that's, that's not what I said. Yes, you did. <laughs> you ever heard that before? Yes. And you tell them, that's not what I said. Yes, it is. That's what you heard, but that's not what I said. Because people don't hear some things what you say. They hear 
what they think you see. Because they have a certain perception. Y'all ever got into arguments so let me tell you, it's not worth it. Pick your battles. Don't get into arguments, especially with spouses, y'all. Y'all still ever get mad at each other and everything. And listen, sometimes it, just let them win. What difference does it I didn't say it like yes, you did. Okay. Sorry. Because you can sit there and argue. And it doesn't matter if that perception, that's just the way you said it, when it's all said and done, that's what it, you, that's, that's the reality. They, you hurt. They hurt like that, so you said it like that. Just get it over with and say, I'm sorry. Okay, you win. <laughs> How many of y'all have a hard time letting somebody else win? Come on, y'all know y'all, and y'all, I, I ain't winning this one. And if you put your raise man for hell, he can win all the time, ain't he? <laughs> I can tell what Henry knows. He got knots on his head. <laughs> <laughs> but folks, this is real problem. Perception <coughs> is very important. So your perception has to come from somebody. Where it come from? Is it coming from an experience? That means your thoughts. Where do thoughts come from? What make the thoughts realistic? What make, what make these thoughts your thoughts? I've made this statement before, not trying to be sarcastic, but when someone says something to me, they say, uh, what do you think about so-and-so, so-and-so? And I'll tell them. And they say, you want to hear my thoughts? I say, I already know your thoughts. How do you know my thoughts? Because I know where you got them from. I know who gave it to you. Because many of us, we are intimidated of coming up with our own thoughts. Especially if it doesn't match what is consistent with what people consider this is mainstream. And I have an issue when I ask people, where'd you get that from? Where did that come from? And many times people can't tell you where it came from. Is that your thought? Okay, tell me how did you arrive at that? They can't tell you how they arrived at it. It's like doing a math problem, and you get the answer, and you tell your teacher, I, I didn't cheat. They say, okay, here, give you another problem. Show me how you got it. You can't get the answer. So that means you got it from somebody else. Am I making sense? Yes. If you, if, you, if you got the answer, if you, that's why it's good, folks, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. That's why it's good to let your children figure stuff out. Quit giving them the answer to everything. Because if they become a good problem solver, they won't always look to someone to solve the problem for them. You're not giving them that power. You're giving them the ability to create, to think. Let them figure it out. You're not doing them any harm. You're actually helping them because that causes that motor skill, their mind to start thinking. Because you're not helping people when you give them the answer to everything. You tell them, research it, check it out. Why don't you just tell them? Because you're used to people telling you. And if you, if you got to a point where you had to figure something out, you can't do it. And then you need to know, are you doing it the right way? Or you figure this thing out where it's actually the right way to do it? Or do you always feel that, well, this is the way I do it, so I don't agree with nobody? No, that, that ain't the way it happens, because you get to deal with other people. So you always have to include other people in your problem solving. You got to think about, okay, here's the way I see it, Brother Howard. So if this is the way I see it, but I got to figure out, how is this going to affect you? Now, if I don't care how to affect him, then that means that I'm not doing this right. And before I move on, let me say this. There are some people, how many of you all know some people that overthink things? I'm guilty of that. You say, yeah. Sure. She said, yeah. But I'm much... <laughs> They are from the front row, y'all. They, 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 they jumping on me, gaining up on me. But here's the thing. I'd rather be 
a person that overthink than underthink. Because many times when you underthink, you, you, you stop thinking before the situation has been resolved. And everything on the stop, on the, when you stop thinking, everything from the other side starts blindsiding you. Wherever you stop. How many of y'all are guilty of saying, you know, often I don't think things through? So y'all don't want to admit that. But there are some people I know, they don't think it all the way through. They think so far and they stop. They think so far and they stop. And you say, have you thought it all the way through? I didn't think that far. Why not? See, if you're going to live this life victorious, you have to learn how to think. Now, I can't, I don't tell people what to think. That's what's wrong with our society. The news media even telling people what to think. They have an agenda. You turn on CNN, MSNBC, MSNBC, Fox News, they all got their own spin. They all got their own agenda. When you learn not what to think, but how to think, and how to do it where you are actually getting, you're actually getting some great uh, uh, answers. Great thing, you, you, you actually have a, uh, 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 I like to say this, you actually have a clear, concise way of solving problems and dealing with issues because you have learned how to think. And that doesn't mean if you don't think like everybody else, you're not supposed to. Now, there's some things we can think and we're in agreement, but, you know, if we're going to brainstorm and everybody thinking the same thoughts, you don't need to brainstorm. So you may have a different idea, you may have a different approach. And some people say, well, if you thought about this, okay, if you do that, what you think is going to happen if you don't tell this person about that? Oh, I didn't think about that. Anybody know some folks like that? See, we don't want to admit that, but that's, I've done it before, and I say, man, I didn't even, I didn't think this thing through. That's what we need to do. When you get ready to go and pay a bill, Brother Sam, and you know you got debt, and you go out there and you, well, I'm going to get this and you charging it up. And you don't realize that, hey, that bill will come in. Right? And if you're not ready for it, you didn't think it through, oh, I thought it was going to come on this time. No. We, we talked about this before. I'm going to move on after I say this. I don't understand how people, as cute as these children are, beautiful little children, and you dress them up in expensive stuff that they're going to outgrow in another three months. It don't, I don't get it. You buy this boy and he wears a size 7, next week he'll be wearing a size 8. Get him some shoes that and you don't mind throwing them away or putting them in the closet or giving somebody else. Why are you buying expensive stuff on kids that they're still growing? And does that make sense to you all? It may not make sense to some of y'all, but to me, it makes all the sense in the world. There are a lot of things we don't think it all the way through. Amen. Let me move on. Y'all don't like that one. Anyway, uh, your thoughts create... How do we get back there? I didn't do it yet. I didn't get it yet. We are what we think. Say it. Say, we are, we are what, we think. what we think. That's a true statement. Amen. Amen. That's a true statement. There is a person by the name of Gandhi. He said, a man is but the product, it's, a man is but the product of his thoughts. What he thinks he becomes. Amen. Proverbs says, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. See, we don't understand the importance of thoughts, how valuable it is to what we think about someone else, what we think about each other, what we think about a situation, what do we think about the weather, what do we think about, you know, different, our thoughts carry, it has a lot to do with the images that we have. Amen. Amen. So we need to understand that the Bible says, not only cast down every, it says cast down the imagination, but it says, but every 
thought, every high thing, and bring it to the obedience of Christ. In the boys' Bible, y'all ready for this one? In the boys' Bible, it says, we are demolishing arguments and ideas and every high and mighty philosophy and put and pit that pits itself against the knowledge of the one true God, we are taking prisoners of every thought, every emotion, and subduing them into the obedience of the uh, to the anointed one. Woo! -hoo. So here's what the boys Bible say. It says, we are demolishing arguments, ideas. See, the, the, these thoughts and these ideas are strongholds that came from the world. And these thoughts and ideas and strongholds are designed to help us to think lowly of ourselves. Amen. Not to see ourselves the way God created us to be. Yes. Not to see ourselves as being, you know, I, I haven't seen the movie yet, but I see a lot of people are very positive about their, their African heritage. And we have always been beautiful people. Amen. But we've been beaten down to believe that somehow or another we are cursed because our skins are dark. That's a lie of the devil. Amen. That's a distortion of the devil. That's not true. When you see people who understand real beauty is not based on the outer appearance anyway. Real beauty is from the inside. Because you can be very attractive on the outside and ugly on the inside. Y'all know some ugly people on the inside? You don't have to tell them that. Just <laughs> because it, 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 you know, you, really, you can see some people who, who, may, who may not be what you call attractive on the outside. But they have such a beautiful character, beautiful spirit. They are generous. They are nice. They seem like they're always smiling. They're very uh, 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 courteous. You find those kind of people and you just, you love to be around them. But all of this superficial surface beauty that can wash off when you show. That, <laughs> that's not genuine. Amen? Amen. So when you have thoughts of who you are, you also should make sure you take prisoner not only every thought, y'all with me? But also every emotion. So doing them to the obedience of Christ. You gotta take them prisoner. Amen. 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 That's how important your thought life is, folks. Because we are what we think. We are what we think. So we must take prisoner. We must take prisoner every thought that is sinned in the mind. That word of sin is very challenging. It means to rise to a superior or a higher point or rank or degree. It is a position of dominance or controlling influence. It is a possession of power, superiority, or preeminence. So all of these things that are sin into our minds, these thoughts, they're not coming from God. And you cannot allow uh, the enemy to plant those seeds in your mind, those ungodly thoughts. Folks, we cannot allow our thoughts to run rampant if we expect to be successful. Amen. Amen. We cannot allow it to happen. Amen. So, the question is, who determines if our thoughts are godly? Since we say we need to have godly thoughts, who determines it? Want to know who determines it? In Psalms 139, turn it with me, please. Turn it with me, Psalms 139. And in verse 23, it says this. And when the last time have you done this, folks? Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, and know my thoughts. When the last time have we actually asked God? Search us. Try me. Know my thoughts. And see if there be any wickedness in me. Any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. See folks, that's what we have to do. We have to get to a point where we can't, we can't just accept the fact 
that someone say that, oh, you're a godly man, you're a godly woman. No. We need to say, Lord, you're the only one that knows what kind of, what my heart is like, what my thoughts are like. You know me from the beginning to the end. You know what I'm all about. I don't have a problem with asking God, Lord, search me. <coughs> Try me. What are my thoughts? Are my thoughts the way you want them to be? Or my thoughts the way they should be? Or any wicked way in me that I need to repent of? And if, I, if it is, then I want to repent and I want you to lead me in the way of everlasting life. If you truly, folks, planning on becoming stronger than your struggles, it starts with your thinking. We got to have a repenting heart. We got to have a mindset that we realize that as believers in Christ, that our thoughts have a lot to do with what kind of struggles we're dealing with. We're going to actually stand real quickly. I want to pray with you.